This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, I'm back. It's another week that we're going to be going through September and October. Uh, we had some audio issues last time, so I switched over to a different mic. Uh, it's one that I was using for a while. The Blue Yeti, it's just been troublesome ever since I got it. I'm not sure if it's the mic. Uh, a lot of folks have offered to help out, try to get a new one, this, that. I'm of the philosophy that the channel should sustain itself. So just if you can, click and subscribe and uh, thumbs up and that'll help share it with uh, other folks that are out there and you know the youtube will pay for it i don't need to be begging you guys for cash individually that's just too much everybody else does that and i'm i'm just really not into it what i am into is street masters and those guys have announced something awesome it's not going to go to kickstarter a lot of you have come to this channel from the street masters content that i've made so i always try to let you know what's going on with them in October, they're going to be doing a pre-order system so that they can basically buy a whole new batch of material to pay themselves out of pocket for uh, all the replacement parts and things that people didn't get when their uh, distribution partner, um, formerly Black Box and now Ad Magic, just screwed everything up royally. And uh, if they ever get their content back, if they ever get anything that was back in those warehouses that Ad Magic just basically lost, then maybe that'll go up on the retail store. But for now, they're going to come out with brand new uh, content for Street Masters that people can buy, along with complete print runs of everything that was Kickstarter exclusive. And you'll be able to pick that up around October. They're going to have the pre-order start for that. So if you're interested, jump on in that and uh, you'll be able to uh, great, get a great game. And come back to the other videos I've made, and you can learn how to play it, too. And then, first up for our games for this month, we've got The North Provenance. This is by Smallbox Games. It is a one-man show. I know what that's like. And what he does is he... I don't think he's doing the artwork himself, but he makes the games himself. And uh, they're simple. This one is um, about ancient alien races and different facilities that you can put together and uh, deal with artifacts. Um... This one is two minute, or sorry, two players for 30 minutes, so it's a pretty fast game. I have a game called Imperium Contention that kind of fills this niche for me that is going to be arriving within a couple weeks, so I'm probably not going to jump on any new space-themed games um, that are card games just yet, maybe for like another year or two. Um, but uh, if I didn't have that going, the art is very, very compelling, very, very thematic, and uh, there are offers also for all of the other small box games. If you were interested in any of those things that play quickly and, um, you know, you support somebody who's operating domestically, uh, manufacturing domestically, trying to put out a good product. And uh, by all intents and purposes, <laughs> it looks like he's putting out good products. So give it a look. If you're not interested necessarily in the North Provenance, maybe you're interested in one of the other games that he's got out there. Just check the Kickstarter page, which you can find in the description. Don't check the comments. Check the description, and it'll jump you ahead, and you can go to all those links. Then we've got a shipbuilder, Last Days of Athro Bay Final Countdown. So you have to gather resources strategically, and the idea is you're building your spaceships up. Uh, I love the little handy graphics they've got there. If you want to see more of them, they've got one for each one of their ships. And uh, two to five players, I guess if you're going to play one of those Sandy Peterson games, then uh, if you have that type of group, then it would be great because uh, it plays for higher player counts than what I require for my minimum. I need to be able to play everything solo because it's hard to get groups together when you're older, right? Yeah, kids running around 12, 13 years old, it's not the big a deal. They can always get together. But when you're like 40, I mean, come on, you got responsibilities. Um, otherwise, I think uh, it could be a lot of fun. It is more of a tile placement thing. I think also if you play Terraforming Mars, then the tile placement on the planet would feel pretty normal. It's just a different type of game. And uh, maybe you could even make it like a campaign with that, like you're trying to escape Mars or whatever the case is uh, in this game, but you built it up in the previous game. Lots of different reasons. Maybe even throw in some Nemesis to go with it. If you're a space junkie, this is another one of those games you could jump in on. And Dune, the trailer just dropped. You know, maybe you can make it feel like Arrakis you're trying to get off of. Lots of different ideas to throw out there to make your game night fun if you uh, would like to build a ship in this one. Then we have a 3D printable game. Don't forget that all 3D printable stuff is usually in with the RPGs 
because, uh, you know, that's where all the minis and other terrain stuff ends up getting used most of the time. But I'm throwing it in here because this is more of just a regular board game. And I would definitely suggest you have an FDM printer if you want to get all these different types of colors. Uh, it does not require any of the um, wonderful resolution of a resin printer out there. So if you have one of the more inexpensive FDMs out there, the ones that are easier to maintain and clean, use these. It looks like it's all made out of candy, uh, according to the, the pictures and things that they've chosen. Like that tank looks like it's made out of... Um, uh, what are they called? Little French ones, macarons, and some uh, lifesavers stuck on there, and maybe some little like wedges. Great! It's a it's a war game done on uh, hexes. You do not need necessarily to print this off in uh, STL format, but it would be a great project if that is what you wanted to do. It is a strategy game, and uh, if you're interested in those types of, uh, of games, or maybe you just wanted a low cost, low investment uh, way to practice. With somebody new or a project to uh, finally use your 3D printer, this would be a, a good option for that. Take a quick look if you're interested. You do not need to print them out. You can just use tokens or something else if you wanted to. Then if you want a dungeon crawl from the rodent point of view, we have Assault on the Marmot King. And Marmot, if you're not aware, is a type of burrowing ground squirrel that is apparently larger than tree squirrels that is found all throughout the world. So there's your Mutual of Omaha wildlife uh, moment right there, thrown in there. Um, it is a sequel to Bite and Write, the Treaty of Rodentia, which is the previous game by Print and Fun. It, it has a solo mode, it's pretty fast, and it feels like those D&D games, uh, there was one for Temple of Annihilation, I believe there was a Drizzt the Horden one, um, uh, the Storm King's Thunder, I think, has one, where you pull these encounter cards every time you want to move around, and it affects the world and you get hit by something uh, out in the world as opposed to uh, if you were playing it just, you know, theater of the mind, um, that type of system. And uh, you flip over different tiles and uh, you mark it up with a marker as you move across to keep it fun, keep it fresh, keep it different. And the cards will tell you what it is that you're going to have. It is fairly cheap, uh, very quick to play. And if you're looking to continue you, your rodent adventures or you just want a quick little dungeon crawl, it's a, a cheap way to keep going. Then we have a dice drafting game. This is Monsters on Board. It won't be arriving in time for this Halloween, but maybe next Halloween, where it's a lot more fun to put out there. And it has all these cool, spooky little monsters. If you did not pick up, uh, ter or was it Horrified for the Universal Monsters uh, available at Target? Or if you did not pick up Oncoma Games Monster Slaughter, which has... In my opinion, superior um, minis because there's so many of them and there's such a variety in Monster Slaughter. This is a good opportunity to get your standard uh, witches and Frankenstein monsters and little squid guys and werewolves and all that kind of thing. If you're in need of that, the minis on this look better than the ones in um, Horrified for uh, the, the one from Target. Because, you know, it's a target game that doesn't have the, the love and the craft and all that thrown into it for mass market. This one is a little bit more that way. Uh, very interesting, very cartoony. And uh, otherwise, you know, it's also got some cool 3D cars that look like uh, something that would come out of the monsters that you can put your um, dice onto as you keep them. So that part's pretty cool. Uh, if you don't get the minis, there are standee options to uh, be a cheaper version. But other than that... You're going to be just rolling those dice, trying to get whatever resources you can, and uh, scare the folks of Startle Town look at, looking for spook juice. Then we have an interesting game based on the tarot. This is Arcana Magica, and what you're going to do is you're going to take a regular tarot deck and use dice to make it fight in uh, the hopes of either, I guess, bringing in or making the best of Armageddon, which... Uh, you know, I guess that's the ultimate in uh, divination, right? The prognostication of the future is to uh, find out what terrible things can befall you and make it work in your own uh, best benefit. And I guess people in them olden days would have uh, done it with the tarot cards or looking at comments or whatever the case is. So uh, it's a bit of a throwback to that. Um, a lot of playing cards as we see them were from these types of decks. I think it's a great story. The art looks pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it's just something to, to mix it up a little bit. 
And I guess if you really had to, you can do a little storytelling and uh, fortune telling at the same same time if uh, you decide to pick these up. Um, yeah. So I think though, if you're gonna sleeve everything, invest in those FFG orange sleeves, uh, which are the tarot sized one, which Gamegenic I guess switched brands and they have that now. So yeah, pick them up. Then we have something different for Russia to be in the news for. This is Feudal Endeavor. It is about the reign of Catherine the Great. So uh, the idea is you are going to be bidding in secret to gain her favor and at the same time colonize or expand into Siberia and make it work for the, the greatness of the Russian Empire. So if you're into standees, if you're into um, you know that's this type of a time period, and uh, lying and cheating and stealing and all that good stuff with your friends and uh, trying to fool them into whatever uh, it is that you uh, are trying to hide behind your screen, then maybe this one's for you. And we have an expansion based on the book uh, series, The Reckoners. Um, this is Steel Slayer, and it takes place in New Chicago, which I guess is the future Chicago. Uh, this is a world where something has happened and a bunch of people have gotten superpowers and of course that has been exploited in terrible ways and left um, large areas and populations just completely fractured from what they were in our time. Um, it's like now without the superpowers, right? But apparently, uh, you know, it's a, a minis game. It has some interesting uh, different figures that go along with it. Some in translucent plastic and some in regular old gray. Depends on the superpowers that you've picked. Um, there are different boards that uh, have different districts that you can pick up. And you have a little bit of that area control from the look of it that I can tell. And then a little bit of just blowing up bad guys. So if that's something you'd be interested in and you didn't pick up Hour of Need or um, there's another Brady and Adam Sandler uh, Sadler. There's no N. Um, it's a superhero thing coming out in a couple of weeks. So this is in competition for that. So if you're not into a uh, modular deck system or any of that kind of stuff, then uh, maybe uh, this is more along your, your, your world. Uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of different uh, tokens and things to keep track of. But if simplicity in your gaming is what you're looking for, Scott Boltman has six more historic international strategy board games that are very simple. They're a lot of pegs as you can see there, into different types of maps, and they go into different rules. So uh, some of them require different player counts, but they're all small. They're all very uh, simple components, and probably, for the most part, interchangeable. If you, As long as the board's there, then you can probably swap in different colors of pegs uh, as you need to. If you're into any type of small game, something you could take on vacation and not worry too much about, then uh, maybe one of these will be for you. Uh, definitely they are all separate, so the box products would have their own board, they don't look alike, it's not like it's swappable uh, for the boards or rules or anything, but uh, you can probably do it with other components. And then we have Tit Whiskers, which is about a bird called a tit. They're all over Europe and Asia, they come in many varieties. There's, um, you know, all different types of colors, there's all different... Uh, you know, varieties. There's uh, different sizes. They're uh, a lovely bird, and I think everyone should get to know at least one very well because uh, nature's amazing. So, you know, even if you wanted to put whiskers on one, then uh, you could have this game, which is about basically ripping off Cards Against Humanity <laughs> in the um, pursuit of describing bad technology or badly describing some form of technology. Uh, there's not a lot of description here. I think they're really kind of going for uh, just the black and white card theme thing, trying to sell people. And it's like, oh, it's a party game, quick. It's just like that other party game that's much bigger and, you know, we're biting off of. That's fine. Um, the the name and the theme do not go well together. It, it's It's harder to describe. You wouldn't see this box and then think that it's about technology and all that. So... Maybe if they get more going on, it'll make more sense, more categories. But if you're just looking for another type of Cards Against Humanity game, then maybe jump on this one. 
And then we have a game that I don't know why it isn't doing better. This is Type 7. It has solitaire modes and two-player submarine warfare. And you build this laser-cut submarine to play with. That's amazing. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I prefer that it didn't go acrylic because acrylic, once it snaps and breaks, it's going to be really hard to put back together. Whereas a little bit of wood glue goes a long way on this MDF uh, submarine. U-Boat sold really, really well and had its own submarine. So you could use this as uh, part of that game. You could put on a wall, shelf, or anything else like that, and then uh, pop out the game parts You know, whenever you feel like playing a submarine. But otherwise, the model is definitely something that would look great uh, on a wall or, uh, you know, on your desk, that kind of thing. Something to think about. Good components should always be celebrated. Something that is entirely different, entirely new, and has a solo mode, just in case you can't find anyone else to geek out on your submarine obsession. Then we have a more fantasy-style solo game that is playable up to five players, the idea being that there are competitive and cooperative modes that mix together. So in one section of the game, you're going to be competitive. In the other section, you're going to be cooperative. That changes things up quite a bit because you don't know. I mean, you're going to have to work with the person rather than just annihilate them at some point, right? So you have to make a decision as to when you're going to make your, your move and how long you're going to keep them around because you might not be able to defeat the big boss at the end. Artwork looks pretty cool. It's uh, higher than what you see in a lot of the standards for other uh, games in this fantasy world uh, or this fantasy genre. That part is pretty cool. Uh, mainly all told with cards, so you have a low fr footprint and a fairly low cost as opposed to a minis game. If it's something that you think you'd be into, you got a couple of friends or you want to just uh, play through another fantasy world alone, then take another look at Asunder. They're uh, right there in the description you can click on. Then we got a game that might explain how certain things end up on the Urban Dictionary. This is Compound Chicken. And the idea is you have one starter player that is considered the uh, director, I guess. And they put down a, uh, a card. And it will have a single word on it. And you will have a hand of cards. And you will put down another word with it to make a compound word. English lesson, right? And then uh, you're going to have to define it. And whoever has the best meaning, the best uh, answer to it, they win. Then you get these party foul cards that go along with it. And people have to move cards around. And, you know, it gives it the game element to it. I think it's pretty neat. Um, it's more fun than just randomly picking words out of the dictionary, I guess. You could do it that way, too. Um, you know, because they've been uh, curated to, at some point, work well together. It could be interesting. And if you did come up with something really cool, throw it on the Urban Dictionary. Share it with everyone else. Then we have another game out of Russian history. This is Rus. And one of the things it can do is get you to lie. Get you to cheat. Get you to pretend to be a secret identity. Well, this happened apparently in uh, Russia in the 17th century after Ivan the Terrible died. Uh, everybody said they were his heir. Everybody said they were part of his family, and apparently one guy had no relation to him whatsoever, ruled Russia for a couple of years as a result of it. So that's interesting. It's got some interesting history to it, and everybody is going to have different skills. If you're a farmer, you get certain things. If you're different types of diplomats or aristocracy or merchant or whatever. But you're not going to tell anybody. If you get caught lying, then you suffer the consequences. But... If you're not going to get caught lying, lie away, bluff away, get whatever that you can. And every turn, when you do get caught, you can just pull a new one and make, you know, keep going through. So sounds interesting. A couple of different mechanics that you see in other games separate are brought together. And uh, if you like both, then maybe you'll like this one even more. Then we have Spaceship Omega, SSO, the Rage of the Montalbano. Now, when I hear Rage of Montalban, you can only think of Khan, right? Anyway. Uh, this is a game that seems very much like Nemesis and in the sense that you're running through a ship that you're not really sure what's going on. It might have parasites. It might have um, other types of unknowns. You don't know who's uh, doing what in the crew. You can have uh, solo mode all the way up to six players. You can work together. You can work against each other. All that kind of stuff's going on while the oxygen is depleting. So that part is pretty cool. A little bit like Deep Madness. If you've played that one, 
But this is a very much simpler game. There's no minis or anything like that. You use pawns instead and uh, cards. So if you're looking for something with a small footprint, uh, you can get STL files for a very small amount if you did decide that you want to get um, you know, a model of your own of the ship. That part's fine. And uh, you know, there's just cool stuff, other things available in the stretch goals you can check out. If you wanted the Nemesis Light, I think this is a very good option if you weren't uh, thinking to go all in and 300 bucks on you know what Awaken Realms has. Maybe this is uh, something good for you and you can uh, ease your budget a little bit. Then we have a trivia game that you'll probably actually play. This is Outsmarted and you use an app to run the game from a website which I hope is going to be continually updated but it has video and animations and all kinds of stuff that uh, make it very interesting for those with short attention spans, especially. And uh, trivia games can be hard. The questions, it's sometimes are written wrong. Sometimes it's not hard to understand, or maybe uh, the, the answer is just wrong itself, or boring, or stale. Like, when's the last time you thought about Mitt Romney for an answer, right? But on Taboo, they still have him pop up constantly. You know what I mean? Like, might as well ask about Bob Dole. Like, the people that our new uh, millennials or whatever, they have no clue who those folks are, but somebody from a different time period would. And uh, at least the game would be able to update with new content, new features, new stuff, and use the basic board the rest of the time. So really, I think with this one, you're buying cheap board, but access to the app, be able to have all the extra cool stuff that they might throw in there. And uh, I like the idea that uh, it will have longevity and even be able to tell you can tell it what age range you want for uh, some of the questions so you can move it up to adult or low to kid and then we have a game that is basically a drinking game but without the drinking you it's called rules and you're gonna have all these rules that other people would have if you were playing a drinking game and you're trying to keep track of it as you move down uh, a track so it's gonna be weird stuff like keeping your fist balled up you have to say certain things at certain times and if you can follow all of those rules then you advance down the track if you're caught breaking the rules then you would not advance and every time somebody uh, wins a card then a new rule would come in and replace it so trying to keep track of all the different rules is very confusing some people may like that for me, like whenever I played a drinking game, I hated it because I just wanted to drink. I enjoyed my beer. That's what I wanted. Or my martini. Or, uh, you know, whatever stupid uh, frilly drink I was going to give, uh, like a pink lady or something, a, a shot. So uh, if you're into the rules, maybe with kids or something, it would be a lot more fun. Not with me because, you know, I just wanted to get, you know, sauced. Then we've seen a few dreidel games over the year. Maybe it was last year. Uh, there was like a whole RPG that was dedicated to uh, Jewish faith stuff. And maybe you want a different kind of game. Maybe you want something a little more interactive, a little more fun, a little more complex to play with a dreidel. Maybe you want to use a dreidel instead of a die just to change up the theme of the night. All that stuff is up to you. But Dreidel Revolution is going after that middle one. They want you to play a game that utilizes this tool, the little spinning top, as uh, you know, a means of randomizing the um, you know whatever the outcome is, and have fun with it. Maybe you'll learn Hebrew numbers. Um, I'm pretty sure Hebrew, the numbers and the letters use the same types of characters. It's a very confusing system I've heard from folks. But whatever the case is. If uh, maybe you want to learn more about the Jewish faith or celebrate it or whatever the case is, then uh, maybe those will be available for you in December of this year, hopefully, and just in time so that you could play it during the holiday season. I don't know if it'll arrive in time for Hanukkah, but it'll arrive around there, hopefully. Then we have a game about hiking. Hike it. This is about backpacking. The Smoky Mountain Edition and I believe that the Smoky Mountains are supposed to be where all of the various um, points of interest are going to uh, appear from. Probably real life ones. 
And you have to be prepared for all the different types of perils that you can run into. And some of it is like, um, you have to put whatever's in your backpack. So different tools that you bring along with you and based on a small amount of space, you have to figure out how many of uh, each thing that you need for gear. And when weather has an effect, or let's say you run into something where there's high water, you run into something where the GPS doesn't work. Um, lots of different things that can happen. Um, I'm not going out there in the woods without significant amounts of technology because <laughs> I'm going to get lost and then I'm going to end up every time. I swear, it's just my thing. I'm going to end up walking 200 miles in the wrong direction. It's just going to happen that way for me. I'm going to have to fight a bear. We're going to, you know, maybe we'll bond over like, you know, breaking open a log and getting out the honey. I don't know, but it's stuff like that is going to happen to me. So, you know, maybe it's just safer if I got a board game. Like, I know I'm bigger than Leonardo DiCaprio, but I've seen The Revenant, and I don't want to, you know, tussle with a bear. Anyway, uh, this is the Overseer from uh, Massive Darkness I painted up. And, you know, I've just been putting these at the ends of the episodes. You guys let me know what you think, if you want me to keep doing it or not. I make it so easy to skip ahead that maybe you've skipped <laughs> so far and missed it. Uh, but I'll keep throwing it in there. And I do say episodes plural, because we've been doing two a week for a while. RPGs have had so Oh, many more things than board games right now. And I'm not really sure why that's the case. If it's just summer and uh, people are ramping up for different uh, stuff, I think, like if I had to wager, I think it's more like along the lines of where manufacturing would pop in with the Chinese New Year, like the lead out for when they think that they would have to get it into production, that right around now must be when uh, most of the bigger game companies and, and game manufacturers think that they would be um, right at that window for uh, the Chinese New Year and everything would shut down in China. So they wouldn't be able to get anything out of the ports. If you got a different theory, feel free to throw it out there. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to help me out, if you want to help the channel grow. Uh, if you appreciate the channel, if you can share it with somebody, that part's cool too. And uh, especially share it with the folks that, uh, you know, if you're going over to their um, their page, these small uh, pieces of places, these small uh, campaigns, let them know where you came from and uh, maybe they'll join in later and that will help uh, me be aware of them so that the next time they come out with a product, you guys might be interested and we won't miss out. So... Throwing all that out there, I hope you guys have had a great three-day weekend and that this next one is good to you, too. Football's back, so I'm sure you're going to be busy. You guys have a good one.